And you know, when we look at the things that God does for us, and God blesses us financially, and God blesses us with a great family, and a great church, and a great house, whatever, you know, we should look at the blessings that we have and say, you know, God gave us these blessings, not so that we could just enjoy them, you know, great, enjoy them, but use them for His glory. Use them to serve Him. Use them to help others. You know, if you've been given, well, the Bible says, Whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. God says, look, if you've been blessed, you know, John the Baptist preached and said, you know, him that hath two coats... Let him impart to him that hath none. Right? He's saying, look, if you've been blessed materially, use that to help others. You know, if you've been given uh, luxury and, and good things, use that for the glory of God. Serve God with your life. Don't just sit around and just say, wow, this is great. I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry all the time. He says, no, maybe you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. You know, what a, you know me as a preacher, if I just said, oh, look, all these people listen to my sermons on the internet. That's just so that I can just, you know, speak to all these people and just look at me. No, it's so that I can tell them the truth whether they want to hear it or not. You know, that's why I have that platform to reach out to people. It's to tell them the truth whether it's popular or not and whether it's legal or not. It doesn't matter. It's whether it's biblical or not that matters. And so I need to use my position as pastor to preach the truth, to preach God's word and to preach all of it. And, you know, there are a lot of pastors out there that have an even bigger platform than I do. And they have great crowds of people that come to hear them every week. And they have multi-million dollar buildings and they have nice cars and nice houses and a nice ministry and all kinds of people downloading their podcasts and they have all kinds of people look up to them and you know you want to say to these people you know maybe God put you in this position not so that you could keep preaching sermons that make you look good yeah. Come on. and that make everybody feel good and that make everybody like you so that you can just be so cool and have these great photo ops and just look, you and your wife just look like you're peeled out of an egg all the time, you know, and you're on all the photos and on the letterhead and, you know, you're just such a popular conference speaker. You know, maybe God put you in that position so that you could preach the truth Amen. and to tell people what they need to hear. And what they need to hear is not always a positive message. Right. And it's not always a safe message. And, you know, Esther's put in a position of power as queen, a position of authority as queen, a position of influence as queen. And he's saying, look, you were put there so that you could help people. OK, and you need to put your neck out there. You need to risk your life to help your people, because that's why you've even been given that position. And, you know, I would say the same thing to every pastor. And, you know, I'm preaching to men in the auditorium. You know, there are men in the auditorium right now that have expressed an interest in pastoring, that are going to be pastors someday. And they need to hear this and understand, you know, God gives you that position not to please yourself, not to aggrandize yourself and to see how popular you can be, but rather to save the people, rather to, to help people and to preach what's needed whether it be popular or not. And then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. So now, once she hears Mordecai's admonition and rebuke, you know, she takes it to heart. And she says, Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in into the, unto the king, which is not according to the law. She's saying, look, I'm going to break the law here. And I'm going to march in and see the king when I'm not invited. And she says this, and if I perish, I perish. You know, and that ought to be our mentality also. You know what? If this is what God wants me to do, if this is what God's telling me to preach, if this is what God wants me to live my life, if I perish, I perish. And you know, the great thing is at the end of the story, they don't end up perishing. Nobody ends up perishing except the enemies of the Lord. Haman and his ten sons perish. All the other wicked enemies perish. But you know what? Esther, in the end, doesn't perish. But you know what? We need to be willing to perish. The Bible says, Be thou faithful unto death, 
and I'll give thee a crown of life. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. It says they loved not their lives unto the death. Jesus said, look, if you seek to save your life, you'll lose it. If you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. And oftentimes, the things that we fear don't even come to pass. And we need to realize that in our lives, we need to worry about doing what's right in the eyes of God and nothing else. And you know what? You'll be busy enough just keeping God happy without having to worry about keeping everybody else happy. You know, you need to get in your Bible and figure out, hey, what does God want me to do? What does God expect of me? And we need to do what God says and let the chips fall where they may. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. <laughs>